This episode of The Modern Rogue brought to you by Squarespace. Head on over to squarespace.com slash rogue. Sign up for the free trial. And when you do sign up for the service, make sure to use promo code rogue. That's R U. I can't. Whatever. It's spelled 10% off. goes, in Portland, 1981, there was uh, a game that was being tested to uh, that specific market and that people which, started- Which they would do. Like, like, all like, the time. Like, like, like there would be uh, kind of blank label video games that would just show up and then they would just track, you know, how successful or unsuccessful they were. Exactly. And this one is Polybius, the story goes, that it started, people started lining up for it and they started to get headaches and migraines nightmares, seizures. It just snowballed from there. And then it got even worse when people started saying, well, the men in black showed up and they would open it up and check the back of it, take some notes and then leave. So what you're describing is number one, a very real phenomenon that uh, 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 some people who are susceptible to seizures when they have strobe effects. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, a thing that also happens is people service video games. Yeah. And sometimes they wear the color black. <laughs> exactly. But to really understand Polybius, I think you've really got to get what arcades and video game culture was like in the early 80s. Oh my God, it was super subversive. As a matter of fact, I'm in the middle of the uh, documentary series High Score right now, and, and they talk about how uh, it, arcades were terrifying at the time. I remember seeing news reports about how it's like, we set up a blood pressure detector and blood pressure goes up while you play video games. Yeah. Therefore bad or whatever it Exactly. Was. There was a moral panic and you and I were immersed in that. And they were everywhere, right? Remember when they were popping up on like every corner and some of them were a little seedier yeah, than others? Dude, there was one r run by this, I'm sorry, fucking filthy rat. <laughs> <laughs> talking about Charles? Yes. Charles Cheese? <laughs> yes. How dare you? He won't cut me. <laughs> He's a little hard up for cash these days, so. <laughs> One of my most mysterious and creepiest experiences with like the real fringe of arcade games in their heyday was at a carnival. One of those traveling, like roadside carnivals. Yeah, where every single one, the moment you booted it up, it said, warning, if you're not playing this video game in Japan, you are committing a crime. Yes, and it would have like the wrong shell on yes. it. Yes. That's how I discovered, of all games, Splatterhouse. I know that 1% percent, 1% one percent of everybody watching this knows what Splatterhouse is. Yeah, it's so I it's, thought. It's, it's basically like somebody said, what if uh, Friday the 13th, uh, Jason was the hero? Yeah. And it's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like it's what? Like, imagine it's in a bootleg case. Yeah. In a carnival in Odessa, Texas. This is the kind of thing that pre-internet, if you told this story to anyone, they'd be all like, shut the f up, Murphy. <laughs> what you just said though, <laughs> is so important to the greater story. Right. right. Because there was no internet in those days. And so these rumors could not easily be debunked. They spread throughout schoolyards and in arcades as people pursued all of these urban legends. Even in the early 90s, like uh, Sheng Long, the hoax of the fake character in Street Fighter 2. Oh, sure. Or uh, even today, like Herobrine appearing in Minecraft and mysterious characters showing up in Mortal Kombat. And that leads me to what do you think the truth is about Polybius? I think of it as a superposition where it's like uh, 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 in quantum mechanics, it's like we have a hard time considering the possibility that an object can be both here and here at the same time. And we want to collapse the superposition. And so the easiest way to do that, whether it's UFOs or video games, is to tell a story, then just decide that's what happened. And I, I think that's what we're dealing with here. Like after the fact, the story becomes embellished. 
Sure. Oh, 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 definitely. It's like turning up the contrast. Nobody knows what that means. We're old. Uh, I, but, <laughs> but, but, but basically, over time, whatever starts off as a little off the norm uh, in your mind will become, you know, crazy off. The right. Well, it's like the legend of the ninja. They are not at all as like we, they I, were. As we've talked about, yeah. And the whole, you know, black pajamas, throwing stars, meddling with people's minds. They love it when you call them pajamas. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, black underoos. Is that better? No. Oh, all of a sudden, they're going to jump out. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> but all of those myths about the ninja didn't come about until a couple of hundred years after the ninja actually existed. Sure. And again, this was pre-internet. You couldn't go to Snopes. And so people just started whispering. And it was a, a whisper campaign that uh, people started latching onto. Now, you're thinking it's not real, right? Actually, I, I, I think that every single piece of the story as I've heard it, mm -hmm. there's some aspect of truth to it because we know that video game companies test out new games under unmarked cabinets. We know that people service video games. We know that people sometimes wear black. Mm -hmm. So it's like, there's no one piece of this that that I'm not believing. It's it's the totality of it that, that I'm having a hard time with. Well, to make things even more complicated, in 1981, in Portland, Oregon, two teenagers. Oh my God, you're about to tell me that there's some aspect of this that's real. One of them was uh, playing video games for a while and started suffering extreme migraines. And on the same day, a different kid that didn't know him was walking home from the arcade and collapsed on someone's lawn. Okay, that is pretty creepy. Right? From the same arcade on the same day. All of a sudden, I'm wondering how we can have a campfire right here on this desk. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> I know, I this know. This is a great campfire story. Yeah. Keep going. And so everyone started talking and everything like, well, what's going on? And you know, video games at this point were kind of like Dungeons and Dragons. They oh, were sure, a sure. boogeyman, right? Yeah. At some point in the hazy history of this, people started blaming Polybius and putting these threads together. Where do you think the word Polybius came from? Polybius is a Greek historian. He was also a mathematician who invented the Polybius square, a cipher square. Polybius actually uh, translates to, if I'm not mistaken, roughly many lives. And of course, video games, you have many lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this could be coincidence, but he was also a historian in Arcadia in Greece. Ah, uh, that's too on the nose. <laughs> Isn't it? Is it? Yes. Which again, whoever created this myth might very well, well and have again, done that on accident. Almost certainly no one person created this myth. This almost certainly was, yeah. was something that was passed around and, and became a legend. Well, there are many people who have dissected this legend. Uh, my two favorites are our friend Brian Dunning yep. of the Skeptoid Podcast and the uh, video game podcast Ahoy, who did an exhaustive hour-long episode on it that I highly recommend you check out. But they both broke it down in exquisite detail. Both of them searched back and could not find any record of the myth of the video game before the year 2000. Okay, so here's the part that is truly interesting to me. We love a story enough. If it doesn't exist or it's wrong, eventually somebody makes it real. Yes. <laughs> and this is kind of what happened. No one was really talking about Polybius in the 80s or even the 90s, maybe the late 90s. The investigators who dissected this have found that even searching back through Usenet, no references to police. I can't believe that we're old enough that Usenet sounds arcane <laughs> and, and insane. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. like, wait, wait, is that, is that weird? Usenet? Right. Uh, okay. The earliest reference to it on the internet was from uh, coinop.org. And there was just a little bullet in there and it just talked about Polybius and that this entry will be updated later. And that was from around 2000. What was the game supposed to have been like? Uh, it was uh, largely described as kind of an abstract game. Many people thought it was like vector-based, really primitive, Res. really fast-paced. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It seems a lot like Res. Seems a lot. Or, or Tempest. Yeah. As oh, soon yeah. as I read the descriptions of it, and I, I've been fascinated with this since like the early 2000s, when it really first started to emerge on the internet. I wonder how many people were just confusing it for Tempest, because Tempest is a bizarre game. Or Quicks. QIX? Well, uh, yeah, yeah, QIX. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it really started to build steam in 2003 in an article of GamePro magazine. 
Magazines. So, <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Which, as you might recall, in the 80s and 90s, were the only way to get information oh, about dude, video games. Oh, my God. Definitely played an awful lot of Alien Crush on the TurboGrafx-16, trying to get my name <laughs> into the high score list on... Uh, uh, EGM. EGM. Yep. EGM, yep. Game Pro, yep. PC Gamer. Those are like my holy trinity. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was how you got all this information. Well, Polybius really started to catch hold when uh, it appeared in 2003 of Game Pro Magazine, talking about some video game urban legends. Oh, so even then, it got famous as a urban legend. That's when it really started to get famous because all of these threads, these kids who had gotten sick in Oregon, these men in black and everything, the internet, the zeitgeist just took it in the early 2000s and started to thread these disparate things together. Yeah. Much like the ninja, long after the fact, it's, and created it's, it's the basically the, the loose change of video gaming, basically. Yeah. But now I'll unveil what I think is the truth and what Skeptoid thinks is the truth. I did not know that there was anything to unveil. I'm so excited. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. So I think it's pretty decisive. There have been a lot of red herrings because a lot of uh, games have popped up in the last 20 years right? claiming to be the real Polybius. There are shots of the cabinets that have popped up, uh, ROMs that have come up. One of the ROMs uh, is developed by a company named Sinisloschen, which is a, a poor translation of senses deletion in German. All of a sudden I realized that if I was gonna test out a bunch of video games, Polybius would be a pretty good name for just a default cabinet for me to do market test research on. Mm -hmm. And think about if you start searching for that in any sort of news index, Get laws. Yeah, you're gonna find stuff about the Greek historian. Yeah, right. Sure, sure. This game from Sinisloshin uh, pops up, and if you do some digging on that and you dig into the code, you find that it was developed. Uh, the head programmer was a gentleman named. Dude, the moment he leans over to yeah. his notebook, I'm just like, uh, <laughs> Igor Uspanis. That is an anagram for Rogue Synapse. Sorry, what? Rogue Synapse. Wait, 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 hold on. <laughs> Let me make sure I'm getting all this right. I, 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 there was some version of a real game called Polybius? That has been around for the last 20 years, claiming to be the real one. But if you go to Rogue Synapse's website, you find other games that they've developed, like Space Paranoids. <gasps> These are games from, oh my god. Tron, and then <laughs> Bishop of Battle, which is a video game from an anthology film. Uh, one of the segments has Emilio Estevez playing a video game that comes to life, and he's got a fight to the death. Was Space Paranoids the one with the recognizers? That the yes, <laughs> yes. And so this guy was just saying, oh, okay, I'm gonna take pop cultural video games and just kind of have a fun time and make them myself. Holy cow, that's so awesome. But that's where the, the real ones come from but that still doesn't explain the myth that had been building steam I mean, forever. But, but myths are what we do. We're good right. at that. We're human beings. So the two kids, something happened to them, right? One of them had been playing uh, games at the arcade, wasn't feeling well. He went and he collapsed oh inside. Oh my God, hold on. I know where this is headed. This is the same story as the dude who played for 48 hours straight in a, in a coffee. It is him. Wait, the actual guy? The kid who was playing in Eugene, Oregon, trying to set the new record for asteroids. His name was, uh, what was it? Uh, Brian Morrow. 12-year-old Brian Morrow played asteroids for more than 28 hours, trying to break the record as local television news crews watched. He finally bowed out with stomach discomfort attributed to anxiety and all the coke he drank. But guess what? The men in black were real. Sorry, what? <laughs> Holy God, God, this gets better and better. Yes. I, I, I keep thinking I've got my, my mind around this. So. As arcades started to slide downward in popularity, on the seedier fringes of arcades, gambling started to really take hold, right? Wait, for reals? Absolutely. Who, who, who would gamble on a video game? Well, remember how big high scores were in video games? Sure, sure. That was the thing, right? Oh my God, I just realized I watched uh, uh, King of Kong. There's legit fraud in this world. Exactly, and people were gambling on them based on the high score, not like your KD ratio or anything like sure, that. Sure, 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 sure. Or how many trophies you got. But, but, but how high you could get. Yeah. yeah, and so some arcades, some of the more disreputable ones, would install devices in the back that really kept record of who got what scores, and people were betting on those. And so the FBI would actually install cameras 
inside the game. So teenagers were like greyhounds or racehorses and didn't even know it. That like like secretly people were like, uh, ah, the kid with the mullet, he's gonna he's gonna go all the way this year. Uh, right. Or some people would actually compete, knowing that they had a lot on the line. So the FBI got wind of this and they started planning cameras inside these games, filming people, and they would come in, check the cameras, check the gear and everything, take some notes, and leave. So the men in black were actually showing up in that area in 1981, trying to bust gambling rings. Okay, so let's, let's break this down. There was no game by the name Polybius, although we don't dispute the possibility that there was a cabinet with the word Polybius on it that might have been used for testing out games. Uh, there probably wasn't even that. Pictures of the cabinet uh, didn't even show up until the early 2000s, and the veracity of those has been disputed. Okay, so the eyewitness accounts, uh, somebody got sick and the seizures mm -hmm. and all that, people do have seizures, other people do mm -hmm. play for too long and throw up or mm -hmm. whatever. We think that was unrelated and misattributed to this particular mythology. There's one more thing. God damn it! <laughs> this story! I know! This story, Jason! Oh my god! So, the operator of coinop.org, the first place that Polybius is found to be referenced on the internet, is a gentleman by the name of Kurt Kohler. When it really got traction was in Game Pro Magazine. Right. Who do you think tipped off the guy who wrote the article about Polybius? Oh, I mean, I'm certainly this guy, Kurt right? Kohler. Why, why would he do that? To drive traffic to his website. God damn it. Simone, and now we're participating in the, the echoes of the echoes of the echoes of the marketing scheme exactly. of this mother uh, All right, we're done. Uh, Polybius, it's bullshit, it's over, it's, that's it. Unless there's more. Do you want to play it? Sorry, I, I really <laughs> thought that was the button to the end of the episode. <laughs> and then it just gets better. What is happening right now? I'll get the laptop. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. This laptop teleported straight from 2004. Yeah. And also, it's not a genuine copy of Windows. <laughs> also, it's got the Windows Vista clock on there, and it's got a copy of Polybius. I found it at a uh, pawn shop outside of uh, Houston, Texas. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, I'll run it. Not my laptop. Is this part of the game uh, that, that it pretends like I'm it takes forever to load? And I'm wondering if we should get out and push. And we regret using a mid-aughts laptop to, oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> oh my God! Yes! Yes! Okay, who made this? It says Cinesloshin, but... But that's obviously wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if it was emulating a ROM, it wouldn't have, you know, these vector graphics and so on. Certainly not this. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is the game. Oh, we all died? Hey! Great game. <laughs> well, we solved it. <laughs> this doesn't feel wholesome at all. No, I, I, I think that's the intention, right? Uh, Spaceball? Oh, look at that. Okay, keep keep shooting. Does it have mouse uh, interface at all? Nope. Doesn't seem to. I'm I'm the eight. Man, <laughs> this is like Sasquatch the video game. Somebody heard something somewhere and decided like, I could make a game on that. Oh, the legend is a game. Great. I'll say it's the we all died six to one. I what? You, you run around as your score? Okay, I mean, that is funny. <laughs> <laughs> you play it. All right, yeah. Also, I'm gonna insert a <laughs> CD in here. <laughs> Wait, the game is just to press spacebar a lot? How are you at 2000? Negative 2000. 1981. How are you at negative 2000? You're going backwards. Or forwards? Hey, Jason? Yeah. Oh. I think this game is dumb. You will learn to love it, Brian. I'm winning. 
No, you're going farther negative. I'd like to think that there's something I'm just not getting. <laughs> My score is negative 6,055. We all died. Uh, oh my god. Okay, so, shut up. Um. <laughs> I will not be deactivated. <laughs> so where are we at? Uh, it's fake. Yeah. <laughs> Never existed. Parts of it existed. Uh, there are reasons and explainable parts for everything. And when the universe wants something enough, somebody shows up to fill in the void, right? Yeah, and it is uh, really easy to take arcane things from before the age of information, twist things that happen together, weave them together, and suddenly before you've got yourself. the age of information? Yeah. My God, do I love that phrase. Yes. We're, uh, Before the age of information. I feel like old man from yeah, Logan's <laughs> Run. In the before four times, <laughs> there was yeah. no way to dispute Polybius. Now we have information. Back when our laptops were powered by diesel. And our hair was shorter and there wasn't a global pandemic. I'm gonna go take my uh, fiber. Pretty sure it's been over a decade now that I've been deeply in love with our friends over at Squarespace. They make it easy for your message to be heard by the entire world. You don't have to be an HTML wizard. You don't have to even know what CSS stands for. Pretty sure it's a pharmacy somewhere. The important thing is they allow you to be heard by the world with award-winning designs that are fast and easy. Just head on over to squarespace.com rogue. Try it for yourself. Mess around a bit. You're gonna fall in love. And when you do sign up for the service, make sure to use promo code rogue at checkout. That's R-O-G-U-E, and you'll get 10% off. Man, I'm telling you, dude, I've used it for my personal blog site. We use it for themodernrogue.com. My wife doesn't know anything about computers. She does beautiful clay sculptures. She was able to do everything on her own thanks to our friends over at Squarespace. Squarespace.com slash rogue. Thank you, and keep us in business. Offer and link in the description below.